Namaste and welcome to the BAPS Akshardham Spotlight. I'm your host, Nilkant Patel, as we continue our weekly journey at the Akshardham Mahotsav and Festival of Inspirations here in Robbinsville, New Jersey. Did you know that this campus is spread over 183 acres? It was built by the dedication of nearly 13,000 volunteers. This campus has so many places to see, to explore, to learn. Over the past few weeks, we've taken a look at some of these places that you and your family can visit during your time here at Swaminarayan Akshardham. From Nilkant Plaza, a vibrant place at the heart of the campus, named after Bhagwan Swaminarayan in his teenage years, it offers a starting point for visitors to Brahmkund, a pond inspired by the ancient steppe wells of India. The purifying waters allow us a space for reflection and introspection. To the Welcome Center, a gateway to Swaminarayan Akshardham, a place that greets you with warmth so that every visitor knows that this place is for them. To the Robbinsville BAPS Sri Swaminarayan Mandir, an awe-inspiring place of Hindu worship. Every corner is adorned with intricate carvings, a testament to ancient Hindu practices of art and architecture. To Shayona Cafe, offering patrons a diverse array of vegetarian cuisines. Every flavor you find here reflects the traditions that are found throughout the campus. And of course, at the heart, the Akshardham Mahamandir. Last week, we took a look at the Parikrama and Courtyard. In this week's In Detail segment, let's take a look at the exterior of the Mahamandir. Let's embark on a journey through the captivating exterior of the BAPS Swaminarayan Akshardham Mahamandir in Robbinsville, New Jersey. The Mandir's exterior reveals tales and features that define its architectural brilliance. We start with the Jagati Peet. Derived from the Sanskrit words Jagat and Peet, it serves as the physical representation of the base of the universe and is the physical foundation of the Mahamandir. It also serves architecturally to elevate the Mahashikar and ensure stability. The Akshardham Mahamandir stands on a linear 1100 feet long Jagti Peet, which is 20 feet tall and is composed of 13 layers of intricately carved Bulgarian and Turkish limestone. Within these layers, Jarukos house murtis of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and unique quotes of wisdom from history's most profound thinkers showcase in intricately carved frames, adding depth and meaning to the Akshardham Mahamandir. Next, the Mandavar, the exterior wall of the Mahamandir. This Mandavar is composed of 21 layers reaching 33 feet high. It uniquely blends tradition with innovation. Among the layers of the Mandavar, 108 Bharatnatyam dance poses, 112 beautifully carved images of rishis and sages, and 151 different musical instruments are elegantly displayed, underscoring the Mandir's dedication to tradition and the arts. Ascending the Mandir stairs, we enter the Ardha Mandap, the gateway to the inner sanctum. The Ardha Mandap consists of three chokis, the Pravesh Choki and two side chokis. In the Pravesh Choki, Two domes and six pillars, reminiscent of mandirs of Modera in Western India, showcase carvings of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, various Swamis, Shakti Devis, and Ganeshji. Looking up, the Shikhars and the Samarans, representing the upward spiritual aspiration of a devotee, hallmarks of North Indian Nagaradi style architecture come into view. The Mahamandir features eight shikars, each above a Garbhaguru, and a grand sky-piercing Mahashikar with 35 layers. This Mahashikar crowns the main Garbhaguru, which houses the Murti of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and Gunatitanan Swami. The Shikari shikars, inspired by architectural styles dating back to the 5th century, display carvings of tilak chandalos, elephants, 
and murtis with folded hands. Eleven samranas arch over flat ceilings, and four maha samranas dominate the interior domes, harmonizing architectural beauty with spiritual depth. In summary, the Akshardham Mahamandir's exterior is a blend of art, history, and spirituality. Standing before this landmark, we witness a masterpiece that bridges tradition and innovation, etching stories in stone for generations to come. The magnificent Mahamandir you just witnessed was only possible due to the selfless dedication of thousands of volunteers across North America and the world. In our next segment, Voices of the Volunteers, let's learn from one of these inspiring individuals as we get a glimpse into their day-to-day -day responsibilities. We are Side Seva volunteers, and this is our story. There's so many Side Seva volunteers here, both male and female, different ages, from different backgrounds, and from all over the world, all working towards one goal. When I first came onto this site, site meaning a construction site where we're, build, where we're building this mandir, this Hindu temple, the first day, nervousness, uh, excitement, you're starting a whole new life. When you're walking onto this construction site, meeting new people, starting a new seva, volunteering. Think back to the first day, I believe it was October 10th and I felt like I was getting ready for college all over again. The biggest reason why I wanted to come here was that it was a way for me to give back to my Guru, Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Before coming here, it was pretty easy for me to get like really anxious and stressed out about certain things. Um, but after spending some time here, I've learned that everything happens because of God's wish. Whatever task you're doing, whatever team you're on, whatever seva is at hand, you have to work with other people and cooperate and sometimes put away what maybe you think what's right, but like if you listen to other people, they might have a better idea or it might be more efficient. Um, so sometimes just like putting away what you think is best and not thinking that like we're always right, you know. I was actually the youngest person at 19 years old when I started and the team ranged all the way to a 75 year old grandfather and in between with 30 year olds, 45 year olds and we all connected and gelled with each other as if we were just one family. Like I could go to that 75 year old grandfather and talk to him as if he's my friend. Because I'm an only child, uh, I have a family. Anywhere I go in the nation now, I will have at least a one family that I can be like, hey, I'm coming, let's hang out, let's catch up how life is going now. Uh, so just a family that I have gained over here, uh, that's what a site zero was, that we are a one big fat family here. America is based off hard work and dedication and something like this is not possible without either one of those things. All the guys that are here, all the girls that are here, they're here dedicated and they're putting in the hard work every day. They're dedicated to make the Guru Raji and give back to this Hindu community. So there's a Parikrama team, there's the IPP team, there's a grounding team, there's Vata, there's the Mandir Domes waterproofing team. Um, so I would say there's endless teams including basements. Apologies if I forgot anyone, but um, it's endless. Um, but the good thing is that um, we're all kind of versatile. So one day, you know, we might be in one team and another day ha um, do seva at another place. Um, it is a construction site, so we wear helmets, um, steel toed shoes, and whatever appropriate gear. Um, so just like everything in life, things can be puzzling, but um, all of us are different pieces of this big grand pu puzzle. But now when I look at this, I'm like, wow, it's amazing. It's amazing that what we're giving back to the community. This Mahamandir that we're going to see, when it opens and when the whole world is going to see, 
they will experience what I've experienced, that wow experience, that amazing experience, that the peace that they will feel when they walk in, in here, that's what they're going to experience. The values we see in these volunteers is what makes Swaminarayan Akshardham so unique and special. The Festival of Inspirations during Akshardham Mahotsav seeks to explain these virtues to us in weekly cultural programs. Let's explore the sights, the sounds, and the inspiring messages in this week's programs. Angreji Makevat che that the pen is muddier than the sword. Akevat no bhavar the che ke shabda sauthi baran che. Ane no ek murti manu daran Mahan Swami Maharaj na patro che. Swami she amna patro vade lakho hari bhakto ne hu fa pi che. Lakho hari bhakto ne prerna a pi che. Ane lakho hari bhakto ne unnati a pi che. He is guided with love. He is written. With love. He is inspired with love. A pure, selfless, divine love. Tarek Ter September Beajar Tevis Robinsville Prati Bia Pies Natabam Asrit Hari Bakto Jai Samina BAPS Samina Nakshardam Robinsville A Pramukh Sai Maharaj no Divya Sankalpato Te Sankalpanusar Akshardam Na Bhuto Na Bhavishati Thay Reuche Ai Jeje Aose Te Sarvene Bhavyata Divyata Ana Shanti Na Anubhavta Se Ana Ghani Shubh Pranao Laina Jase Aje Akshar Dham Na Kalas Tajadand Ana Tajana Pujan Vidu Na Karikram Khubar Divyata Hi Sampan Thayo Saathe Saathe Aap Sarve Ne Pan Yad Kariya Chhe आप सर्वे ने सुबह चाय पन प्राप्त है इधर आप सर्वे ने प्रार्थनाओं पन सावरी चे आप सर्वे प्रकार सुखी थाओ ते माटे से अक्षर पुरुषोत्तम महाराज ने प्रार्थना पन करेल चे आज ये साजनी सभाना अंतमा आप सो आप सो वही प्रश्न पूछा हो जाए कि जीवन ना तबाम प्रश्नों ने समाधान था है ते माटे शुभ करो तो ते नो उत्तर ये जाए कि रोज पंद्र मिनट प्राप्ति नो विचार कर शो प्राप्ति नो विचार मा मधु यही है जाए प्राप्ति ये जबरदस्त प्राप्ति सही से क्या वायम नहीं 
सर सर अक्षर धाम की गंगा स्वामी नारायण वास भंगा सर सर अक्षर धाम की गंगा स्वामी नारायण वास इसी फॉर गुरुस दिस कांसेप्ट दिस आइडिया ऑफ सीइंग द गुड इन अदर्स इज ऑल बट नेचुरल इट्स इंस्टिंक्टिव बट फॉर अस इट रिक्वायर्स ट्रेमेंडस एफर्ट and a well trained eye but above all it requires practice and so on this day it is my prayer that we all learn to see the good in our families in our communities and in society at large after all the whole world is our family ऋग्वेदना समय थी हिंदूए वैश्विक विशालता ने प्रबोधी है राग देश रहित सुंदर विश्व की विभावना दरेक दिशाओं में अमने शुभ विचारों प्राप्त थाओ जेवा मंत्रों मे उपनिषद कहे कि ईशावास्यम इदम सर्वम दरेक में भगवान दिव्य अस्तित्व है आध्यात्मिक एकता अपन ने समस्त ब्रह्मांड साथ जोड़े वेदों कहे कि अमृत से पुत्रा वयम आपने बदा परमात्मा पुत्रों छे भगवान स्वामीनायण कहे कि आपने सब आत्मा छे नाच जात देश की पर छे अमरा गुरु योगी जी महाराज पर कहता कि मारू ये सारू नहीं सारू ये मारू बीजी एमने एक बीजी भावना पर गुरु ने थी कि भगवान सर्वनु भलो करो कोई नाच जात भेद नहीं हर एक धर्म कोईपन मनुष्य न सारू थाय भलो था हमेशा इच्छता है ये रीते वर्तन में अमने जवाब मंगा जन जन को रंगत नीच रंगा संकल्पित गुरु प्रमुख सुसंता लोकार्पित गुरु जय जय धर्म सनातन हंगा धन्य आज अमरीका अक्षर धाम को करे वंदना 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 अपना शास्त्र कहे अपना शास्त्र कहे कि वसुदेव वसुदेव कुटुंबकम द वर्ल्ड इज वन फैमिली वी आर ऑल चिल्ड्रन ऑफ गॉड साव साची बात है पर आप मन तुक्का आई तई लई जाए आप दुखी थी पर भावना हो तो सुख सुख द वर्ल्ड इज वन फैमिली वी आर ऑल चिल्ड्रन ऑफ गॉड भगवान सन्ना मन में कोई भेदभाव नहीं भगवान सन्ना कोई भेदभाव नहीं बढ़ू आप मन में होटे अपना मन में भेदभाव होटले भगवान में पलटे 
પણ ખરેખર કેમ કે સિદ્ધ થયેલી વાત છે એમને બધા જો હમણાં બધા અનુભવ કયા એ સિદ્ધ થયેલી વાત છે that you can catch up on every single BAPS Akshadam Weekly Spotlight on BAPS North America's YouTube channel? In fact, there are a number of ways to connect with the BAPS Swaminarayan Sansta on social media, including Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, X, and Medium. For our next segment, Voices of the Attendees, let's go to the grounds of the Akshadam campus and hear from some of the visitors about their experiences during the Festival of Inspirations. at a loss of words. Today was, was really, really, really special, not just for me, but for my mom. And, and seeing the smile on my grandparents' face is just really awesome. I'm Swayam Ranjit Bhatia, also known as Sway. I'm an actress. Having a place like Akshadam is just so important. I think it's truly just, just a place, it's a magical place. Really, when I walked into this place today, I, I felt empowered. I think this place helps you feel true to yourself. I think especially growing up when I started around the age of five or six as a professional actress, I didn't see as much of what I looked like on the screen. Being able to inspire others that aren't even, you know, Indian, being able to inspire them with our culture is really an, an important feeling. Just today when I was here with my, I came with my grandparents and the amount of people that my grandparents knew was crazy. You know, it is very hard to go back to India and, and travel to, you know, our, our homeland. So having this as, as like a second home in a way is just so important. My name is Nikia Griffin Stewart. I am a NFL player, also a real estate agent here in New Jersey. Oh man, my favorite part, uh, probably getting a chance to go in front of the Guru today um, and, and bow my head and, and give a quick prayer. I uh, felt very privileged and very blessed to have that opportunity and I, as I mentioned before, I'm not from the Hindu faith so I don't understand the magnitude or uh, even knew who he was prior to this visit but seeing the reaction from everybody else within the building and, and seeing the excitement that they shared when he came in and when they had their opportunity to go in front of him um, really reassured uh, how blessed I was to have that opportunity. Today I learned that everybody greets each other with the bowing of the feet and, and the humility that everybody possesses within this building. So um, I think just going forward in my life and, and walking with that same sense of humility and, and understanding that God is, is in everybody and you know no one is better than anybody regardless of age, ego, wisdom, education. You know We all are on the same playing field when it comes to this game of life. Uh, it's definitely a value that I would take from here today. Kindness, humility, and, and gratefulness um, I think that represents in many ways the, the whole concept and place here very well. I'm Max Kleber, I'm from Germany and I play basketball for the Dallas Mavericks. The one thing that I say is very impressive to me is the dedication and the pureness of, of the spirituality within the people. Um, we can definitely tell that everybody's surfing for a higher good. You know, that kind of dedication, determination um, by the people just speaks for themselves and also like the spiritual approach. Um, when it comes to the temple and everything around it and because you know sometimes uh, when you when you're lost in your own life um, kind of living the daily life you forget about that side and it's really really cool to see um, that this exists and you can you can definitely learn from it having this new vision of who we are and where we need to go as a species not just as a political nationality and that is uh, this great aspiration to the infinite that you see coming out of Bhagwan Swami Narayan here. I always felt like seeing these statues, seeing these temples, the monuments, it's something eternal, it's something infinite, it's not just some local thing or some primitive thing, it's actually uh, a vision of the uh, future and that's why a place like Akshardham can be so transformative. 
And this is a good model for the United States and Americans to see it's not about uh, being indoctrinated one way or another. It's about learning how to work together, be yourself, connect to the universe and understand the divine presence and everyone's like the Maha Mandir here. You can, you have a doorway into that greater, deeper consciousness and presence of the sages, yogis, rishis and of the all of nature and the this great movement towards transcendence that we need to raise ourselves individually and as a society that by being together as part of this organization all of them are better than where they were alone enrique lores ceo of hp well as, as a ceo is what i want my my teams to to believe that what we are doing is bigger than ourselves and that we're really going to be making a great contribution to the world. And clearly, the people of this organization feels it, sees it and behaves accordingly to that. Something that I have observed and I think is very important for us is to be humble. And humbleness is something that you see as soon as you go across the doors of the building. And I have the opportunity to meet some of the Swamis and you clearly see that humbleness in how they talk, how they explain what they do, and how they explain their lives, the experiences they have had in their lives. Meeting with the volunteers was an incredible experience. The inspiration that you see in seeing so many people working to build something together that, as many of them said, is bigger than themselves. Nature has created the stone and the gems but the man has, uh, you know, finished them to use them uh, for the beautiful things in the life. Namaste, I'm Kamlesh Mehta. I'm a jeweler. I did in diamonds and gemstones. But since 2008, I got into the media also. And the newspaper is South Asian Times. There are many different kinds of jewelers. But I'm known for fine jewels. And whenever I see the Akshadham, Akshadham in Gandhi Nagar, Akshadham in Delhi, and now right in our backyard, uh, Akshadham Rubinsville, it's so beautiful, the work they have done, the artists, artisans, the, the vision behind every inch of the, the temple and this development. Akshadam is one of the greatest monumental thing I can see in my life. And I'm, I'm so happy that it is happening while I'm around. You know, actually, I, I use the word man-made, but those people who are working as a volunteer here, they were made by the God. And this art is a gift to them by the God. So indirectly it is created by the God. I think we've heard enough from the grown-ups. Let's hear from one of our junior reporters here on campus during our weekly BAPS Kids Newscast. Take it away, young friend. Hi guys, my name is Dajni. Welcome to the BAPS Kids Newscast. grand rehearsal and everybody's practicing for the big day tomorrow. So this is my Paranatyam group. We've been dancing for six years now. This is Sanvi, Upasna and Dia. Why do you guys like doing Paranatyam? I really like dancing and I think Paranatyam is just really fun. What about you Upasna? It's a good workout and it's a way to get to and Sunby? I like it. I like it. I like it. It's my hobby. What about you? I like it because it's my passion, and there's just something rhythmic about it. So this is my teacher, Harini Masi. Um, Masi, why do you teach Bharatanatyam, and what is it? So Bharatanatyam is an Indian classical dance, um, and it's very one of the oldest classical dance format structure and discipline dance and that's um, that's that's one of the reasons that uh, it's more popular and it's organized dance. For everyone watching at home, can you show us a basic Bharatanatyam step? Sure. Let's start with Namaskar. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to start with Tatka Mukha Mudra. The leg position will be to Samapada. Then we're going to start right leg, left leg, 
Then you're gonna change your mudra to shikharu and you turn your hand around. Then you change your mudra to pataka. Close your eyes. Look at your right side. Go up. Eyes close. Then in the middle. And you bow down. And then you stop your right foot. This is gone. Thank you so much for showing us that step. Did you guys get that at home? You guys should try it. Hey, can you give us a demo? Sure. What are you doing here at the stage today? Oh, that's a great question. Um, my name is Eva and I just got out of talent stage practice. So every week we have a talent stage called Expressions of Bhakti and Balikas, Kishoris, Yuktis all get a chance to participate on the stage. They showcase their Bhakti through different skills that they have. So it can be uh, Kirtan, Mukbar, dance, and we've had many other cool acts. So everybody has many talents. What's yours? Um, so I guess coordinating things, but um, I guess behind the scenes, um, I'm working on just poetry and um, sketching is something I would like to tap into. Hey, what are you doing tomorrow? Oh, that's so cool. Are you nervous when you perform in front of a lot of people? Sometimes. But I know this is for Papa, so I'm gonna so I'm gonna try to make sure that I'm not scared. Give us a little sneak peek. Swami Narayana Sapcha Dakshara Deepati Parihi Paramatma Para Brahma Bhagavan Buddha Shottamaha That's so cool. So I'm kind of nervous for tomorrow. Do you guys have any tips? Yeah, so it's really easy to let your nerves get the best of you, but I think it's really important to remember that this is something that we are um, tied to. It's a part of our culture, and for you, it's Bharat Natyam. Um, not a lot of people get to say that, you know, they know how to do Bharat Natyam, and they're able to stand in front of a huge crowd and showcase their talents that um, ultimately are tied to their culture as well. So I think it's really cool that, you know, you would be able to stand there and show people your talents and showcase them um, to the audience. And so even though it is, easy to get nervous you have to remember that this is something that you know everybody can learn from and everybody can see and um, it's something that is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So which one's the better dancer out of you two? Definitely me. I think everyone would argue that it's me. I would um, agree. My sister has two left feet so uh, there's during practices at home she was like we were watching it back and I was like cracking up at the fact that like she has no like coordination so <laughs> it was a good bonding moment though because she was able to teach me all the steps and we would watch the videos back and just laugh so it was it was a good time at first and we made a few mistakes but it was a lot of fun and we enjoyed doing it for our guru. So this is what we usually wear for a traditional Bharatanatyam. I don't know why we wear it but it looks really cool. So that's all from me today. Thanks for watching the BAPS Kids Newscast. Bye! BAPS Swaminarayan Akshadam is more than just a campus. It's part of the fabric of society. In our next segment, BAPS in the Community, let's take a look at the transformative impact it's having on the larger community. Hi, my name is Sahil Shah, and I'm from Robbinsville, New Jersey. I'm going to eighth grade. Well, uh, for one reason, I helped because I know there's other kids that really need this materials and stuff that they can't have all the resources. So I know there's people from all around North America that would bring materials like pencils, backpacks, and more just so um, we can like. So I was with all my friends sitting down and uh, I was the one giving all this stuff. So I would have the materials and I would hand them out to my friends. They would individually pack them in the pockets and stuff. So um, it was going neatly and good. 
Uh, I did this just because I wanted. It is nice. Well, I learned from um, when they're learning around. Everyone like helps each other, and we always uh, pick up trash if they see. We always, if somebody needs help with their homework, we go over to them, maybe help them with, um, with what they need, and it, it just everywhere from my house all the way to Akshada. Uh Yeah, I've also, I've also. This has inspired me by like. I've seen other people give and more other people keep giving and giving so it's me inspired me to give even more and go even further. Um, I'm Sahan Shah and I live in Robbinsville, New Jersey. I actually did have fun because one, I was with my friends and also like we're packing the backpacks to like for people who some people don't have it so we're packing it for them and just like packing it for them and then the excitement when we give it to them, it just makes me happy. When I've seen people give back, that just inspires me of like my guru, like he it inspires how much he gives back. So when I give back, I feel really good because like the like pe other people are happy and like they're not sad or anything. So like they're happy. Like, so some people, they don't have the, um, these type of supplies, so like when we give it to them and we don- donate to them, it makes them feel happy. Hello, I am Arif Doshi from Robbinsville, New Jersey, and I'm going into seventh grade. I helped donate and separate all the packaging for people who cannot afford or get the supplies they need for school and education because I feel like they could help a little more and like like there's different items and different things that you can use instead of like as an example instead of using a regular pencil they could use a mechanical pencil instead when I went to the store my mom was picking out stuff and I was like oh I want this one and this one so I told her to choose the other ones that have that look better to me and maybe other kids. I want other people to have all the other stuff that I have and like all the separate cooler stuff. It just feels like really good to me. It feels like people who like can't get this, all this kind of stuff, they're getting it and they're gonna feel happy. And it just makes me feel happy at the same time. Hi, my name is Akash Patel and I'm going into eighth grade. Hi, my name is Ayush Patel and I'm going into sixth grade. Yeah, I think we had a lot of fun because to think how lucky I am to have such a good education, all these supplies, and there are people I know that are less fortunate in the world, and giving these supplies to them to make them more fortunate and get a better education makes me feel really happy, knowing that I helped someone out. Yeah. All right, we play class. We learned in, uh, that we should be grateful for what we have and not take anything for granted and try to give back. And all throughout my life, are my gurus, Pramukh Sai Maharaj and Mahat Sai Maharaj, who is the current guru, have taught us to always give back and donate. And you could see this because BAPS has many charities, like BAPS Charities. When the war was in Ukraine, they uh, gave back to people who needed help. It just, it just, inside, it just makes me like really happy knowing that people are gonna are gonna be like they're gonna turn from a uh, they're gonna turn their frown to a smile. They're gonna be really happy. It makes me so joyous inside. Like what he said, I know that people are gonna have a better education, they have better opportunities, and they can become a great person. As we near the end of this week's episode, let's focus our minds, silence the external world, and look inwards as we prepare ourselves for this week's motivational moment, delivered by Pujya Bhaktivardhan Das Swami. When I was younger, I remember being taught about prayer. And one of the ways that prayer was explained to me was that when we pray, we are thanking God for everything that God has given us. And sometime while I was growing up, it seemed that prayer had then shifted to something that we do when we want to ask God for something, when we need His help, when we need Him to do us a favor. 
When I think about Pramukh Swami Maharaj and Mahan Swami Maharaj and the experiences I can recall of seeing them pray, it's interesting to think that of all the people that I've met, those are the people who are the least wanting of something else. And so here are these spiritual giants, people who have no desire for anything, especially worldly, and yet they're the most consistent and authentic and sincere in their prayer. And they pray very consistently uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And so it reminded me when I saw Pramukh Swami Maharaj and Man Swami Maharaj pray so consistently to rethink what prayer was about. And I was reminded to something I was taught when I was very young. And I can remember Pramukh Swami Maharaj doing a sabha or an assembly of young children and explaining how we should pray for everything that God has given us. Having grown up and read so much about the importance of gratitude and how it can really help improve our perspective, which is so important in life, I can now see uh, how people who have deep spirituality actually use prayer as a practice in gratitude. All of us have probably had so many things go right in our life for us to be able to be here today, to be able to listen or to talk or to do good things. So many people in our life must have done something good for us. A parent, a teacher, an uncle, an aunt, a friend, a brother, sister, friends. There's so many people that we probably should be so thankful for. But how can we be confident that we have been able to remember all the good that has been done for us in our life. And I think that's where prayer has a really important role in helping us be mindful of all of the things we have to be grateful for. Things are going to go wrong in life. Sometimes our you know, best prepared plans don't go the way we intended them to. And when that happens, it's very easy to have an asymmetric valuation of whether or not something um, that has happened that's not good is really as bad as we think it is. And usually it, it makes us forget about everything we have to be thankful for. And so this is where having a consistent practice of prayer can really help us improve our ability to be resilient when things don't go right. It really helps us be able to gauge and understand whether what's happened to us that we think is terrible and horrible in many ways and objectively speaking might be very challenging. If we have prayer, if we have that mindfulness of everything we have to be thankful for, then despite how difficult the challenge is in front of us, we could be aware of the fact that, well, we still have the ability to do something good. And that's what prayer is so good for. It helps us understand that the greatest thing that God has given us is the ability to do something good in the moment that we have right now. And so going back to a lesson that seemed very simplistic at the time, we should pray so that we can be thankful for everything that God has given us as we have the opportunity to see this prayer in action in spiritual giants like Mahan Swami Maharaj. It's easy to see how something that seems so simple can have such a consequential positive effect on our life. And just like that, 
we've reached the end of another week on our inspiring journey. Remember, as the chapters of the Akshardham Spotlight unfold, we come one step closer to the heart of what makes this place a true landmark of Hindu art, architecture, and culture. We look forward to welcoming you again to the BAPS Akshardham Spotlight. Until then, namaste and jai swaminarayan.